here we go for today. We got an absolutely beautiful morning. It's gonna get pretty hot, so I gotta stay out too long. I'm just gonna do this morning session probably till maybe like nine o'clock, something like that. You know, just a couple hours. It's about 5.15 right now, sun just coming up. Yeah, see if you uh, can see it. Beautiful. And uh, so the plan for today is fluke. I'm actually going to an area where I caught my only keeper fluke from a kayak last year. And that fluke had mantis shrimp in his belly. So I'm gonna be using gulp. Might bring out you know, the six inch grubs, some big presentation. I'm looking for a big fluke. I want to, uh, you know, try to get a, get, a, get a keeper fluke here. Should have some clear water out here. It's also why I chose this spot. Uh, it typically has clear water. Yeah, water temps are uh, 59. It's about 59, 60 degrees. So it's still still kind of chilly. That weather system dropped it. See some birds working out here. I don't know if you can see them. But there's some bird activity, which is good. Not gonna miss that too much, but hopefully I uh, can mark some bait. If I mark some bait, I'm just gonna drop right down. Stay tuned, let's see, uh, see what we got today. Something grabbed it. Oh, felt super tiny. That is so beautiful. Well, I'm not gonna mess with this because whatever it was, it didn't fight very hard. And I'm not really after tiny stuff today. All right, let's get, let's get to business. Right, so, yes, I am a fan of the silicone skirts a little more than the hair. It's too heavy. I'm just gonna do white. This is a nice white one. White and with a pink shine. And this is maybe a half ounce, maybe three quarters. Yeah, we'll use that. That'll be perfect. So I'm drifting at about 0.9 miles an hour. It's not bad. It's kind of what I want. Almost, almost one. It looks pretty good. I think I need to restart my drift now. This is good. I'm marking stuff. Marking bait this is kind of what I wanted to see. So I think that's, that's kind of bait I'm looking for. On the bottom. That's something hugging low. Alright. 
This might be a sea bass. Or a fluke. No, it's a fluke. Caught a keeper in a long time. Oh. That works. I think he's short, but I'm going to measure. <sighs> Come on, it's so annoying. Yeah, he's definitely short. say definitely because it's only 18 and a half 18 and a quarter but um yeah good sign good sign and he's in, he inhaled it so he's hungry Fish. All right, that's a very healthy, good sign. I don't know what he just spit up, but all right. So I'm super happy with that. Let's try to get a bigger one. Still marking lots of baits in. This is good, this is good, this is good. I'm gonna have to get my net ready. It was not clicked in. I gotta get back on that. They're on the deeper part of the ledge, it seems. Yeah, I gotta go right back to where he was. I think he was on the 37 feet spot find that bait again. Marking fish near the surface. Middle middle water column. Probably more of those shad. Oh there you go, some good got it. That's another fluke. Maybe feels a little heavier. Dang, they are stacked on this right here. Yeah, this guy's heavier. I think he might just keep. Where is he going? Where is he going? He's gonna keep if I can keep him. Nice. Nice. Oh, oh thank you. since uh, I've dealt with keeper size fluke. <laughs>
<sighs> pretty much this time last year. <laughs> That's how long it's been. So yeah, he's about 20. He's about 20. You see that? So. 20 inches. I'm very happy with that. Very happy. Apparently people like bleed them out here, but yeah. just gotta grip them really tightly. I should have a stringer. Fish is secured. We are pretty much back on the spot. 30, 30 feet, 35 max is like the clarity level because I went to 40, 45 and it was black. So that's still pretty good though. And I'm always marking more bait though in the deeper water. So I'm gonna have to go back and forth. I wanna try and fish a little bit in this deeper water. Cause I feel like these fluke could have dropped back with the bait. Right. Yep, see here comes the bait. There it is. I don't know what kind of bait that is. That's a good fluke. This is a good fluke. And he's in that 43 foot. Ugh, that reel sounds horrible. Definitely a nice fluke. Maybe keeper, but maybe not. the boat where my net is. He's close, but he makes it. 19 is 19, so here. There's that end, right? And then here's this end. Just 
spit out an entire squid. He just spit out an entire squid. I just want to get a true, true measurement. No, he's not. He's not a keeper. See? He's not a keeper. So I'm gonna let him go. So you gotta be careful sometimes. I don't like measuring in the net sometimes. Just getting a little bit more oxygen over his uh, gills. size of that squid. Pretty smelly though, so I'm not gonna use it for bait. Feel bad I st stole his breakfast. That's why the pink, sh pink shine worked on that guy. Caught a keeper fluke <clears throat> and the water's really clear so I kind of want to just mess around with a lot of underwater experiments for the Pretty much remainder of uh, this day and the water clarity so that's what I'm trying out I'm trying this like spoon thing with a piece of fish bites just threw the camera under there and I saw a fluke following this thing and like eating it I want to try it again I can't believe I'm getting footage at 30 feet this water clarity is very good very good all things considered the bite shut off though. I, I'm, I'm having trouble getting a bite with the gulp now. And I think it was because the I haven't uh, the bait left, you know. I'm not marking any more bait. Which I think is important, but they're still down there, so let's put this camera back down. Alright, this is the underwater footage that I was shooting earlier where I was talking about how there was a flute following it and I couldn't believe it and how clear this water is. It's roughly 30 feet, 32 feet about and this is really good. Uh, in the summer I can barely get 20 feet or more so all things considered this is pretty good clarity. I know it's not great right now, uh, it's hard to see him but he is following this uh, funny, funny looking uh, spoon with a fish bite back there. On the packaging, it said that it's a blood worm, uh, but I don't really think that the scent changes. It's just the color. Uh, but whatever it is, uh, he seems to find it relatively tasty because he keeps coming back and uh, hitting it. The spoon that I have on there, it serves a, a pretty good purpose, and I didn't really think about this until watching underwater footage. It should have been more obvious to me, but what the spoon, having the spoon in front of the bait like that, it provides action on the bait. Uh, and I think that providing the action can actually be more important than providing flash or color or whatever else it does you'll see in a couple of the uh, upcoming clips where the water is much more clear I move shallower I realize that you know this footage isn't the greatest so I move shallower to see what I could see and unfortunately though there were a lot more sea robins and there weren't any fluke and I really do think that it was the fluke dropped back into the deeper water where that bait was and of course here the sea robins seem to be in like little wolf packs these robins but pretty ferocious little guys I find this next clip of the sea robin pretty interesting. He's going to come up here and chew on this bait multiple times.
But now that he's had a taste and he didn't get anything as a result, he falls back, but he's not done. But this time he comes in, two strikes, that's it. Here you see how the bait, because of the weight of the spoon, the bait in the back is dragging the bottom, collecting a bunch of weeds. And that that is the main problem that I was having, is having this thing drag the bottom because of the additional weight of the spoon. So therefore, I really think that it's important on the weight of this spoon and the wobble. I, I think there's a lot of variables that can occur when you do a setup like this. So I'm gonna be looking for lighter weight spoons I guess like trolling spoons gonna try some different things I've got a couple experiments in the works because I really want to test this uh, this setup a little bit more you're just gonna see how amazing some of the action that it provides on the bait there wasn't a lot of porgies on this uh, trip I didn't really see a lot but the ones that I did see, they were enjoying these fish bites quite a bit. I do think they could be a pretty good bait for porgies. Look in the uh, left side of the screen, there's an oyster toadfish, and he wants nothing to do with it. Just watch how much wobble this thing gives. You see that? Sea robins, I mean it really stirred up those sea robins. There's, there's a lot going on though. You have to measure out the distance between the bait and the spoon and the spoon itself. I mean, there's just so many variables, but it creates quite an erratic wobble to the trailer bait. This fluke to the left was really the only fluke that I saw in the uh, shallower area. But then here, I went really shallow. This is about 8 feet of water, and I can see the bottom from my kayak. But here you have actually a quite a bit of fluke. You see that one right there, hiding in the sand? Really cool. I mean, these are all smaller fluke you're going to see, but it's pretty amazing uh, just how shallow they were and just how well camouflaged they are. Here's another one right there in the right hand side of the screen. You see them there? Yeah, pretty pretty amazing. And then there's gonna be one more that's hidden. And I'm gonna do the outro now though because I've actually forgot to do it out in the water. I had to get back uh, a little early on this trip. So yeah, it was a good day. I'm very happy that I was able to get out in the morning uh, before the heat came and get a keeper fluke. Very excited to see some larger fluke out there. I was a little surprised, honestly. What really helped, though, I think, was doing these videos and having a video log so I knew where to go and what to use. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for some more experiments as well on this underwater setup.